This video shows how to easily observe with a 12-inch telescope from your driveway. We'll show you how to move the telescope from the garage to your driveway and how to block street lights or house lights that interfere with viewing. There are clickable links to videos and web pages mentioned in this video in the description below the video window. Links are also included in the web page version of this video at the URL below. To move the telescope to or from your driveway, leave the fully assembled telescope mounted on the tripod with the tripod resting on a wheel dolly. Just roll the telescope out onto the driveway and lock the dolly wheels to observe. Then roll it back into your garage and put a plastic bag over it when finished. Push on the top of the tripod, not the telescope, to roll the telescope. It's top heavy. To build a dolly for around $100, see playlist How to Build a Telescope Dolly. If house lights or street lights are visible from your driveway or another observing site, block them with a car or build a portable light shield. Astronomy Magazine article Hiding from the Light by Glenn Chapel shows how to build the blue light shield at the right of this photo for around $60. The downloadable tutorial in Hiding from the Light is very helpful and here are some lessons I learned while building two light shields. Please watch this entire video and read the web page article before purchasing parts and building the shield. Here's the finished light shield. It's a little over six feet high from the ground and it's over four feet wide. The feet are rotated parallel to the shield for storing and for transporting. To set it up, you rotate the feet to a right angle from the frame. Here's the finished support frame. It's constructed with one inch PVC pipe. This photo shows the parts of the support frame that are glued together. And we'll use the photo to describe the parts you need to purchase. Purchase three 10-foot PVC pipes. Have the store cut each pipe into a 6-foot and 4-foot piece and keep all the pieces. Two of the 6-foot pieces are used in the side supports. Two of the 4-foot pieces will connect the two sides. They'll connect these T's and these elbows. These are the feet at the bottom and we'll cut those from the remaining pipes. We'll cut the, the third six-foot pipe, we'll cut four 18-inch pieces, and then from the four-foot pipe, we'll be cutting a two-inch piece here and here, and we'll be cutting two 20-inch alignment pipes that are not shown. You'll cut the pipe with either a power saw or a hand saw or a PVC pipe cutter and a miter saw is the easiest tool to cut the pipes with. You'll also need steel wool or pieces of sandpaper to deburr the ends of the pipes as we'll describe later. And you'll need fittings and there all the fittings are one inch PVC slip-on fittings. You need four T's, one, two, three, four, you need two elbows, 90 degree elbows, and you need four end caps, and you'll need three 30 inch bungee cords and PVC pipe cement. A five by seven plastic tarp with grommets and a roll of paper towels. Before you start cutting the pipes yourself, please read the entire article because these two inch pieces are tricky. All the pipes will be deburred with the steel wool. Just grip it and twist. These two pipes are pushed into the fittings. You'll need to grind the ends, one inch on the ends, or sand it down so that you can push it all the way into the fittings snugly. Likewise, this end of the two inch pieces needs to be ground so that you can push it in snugly. Listen to the instructions carefully before cutting the two inch pieces. Because a two inch pipe is too short to hold while grinding, grind one inch 
at the end of the remaining four foot pipe until it will push fully into one of the slip one fittings, then cut off the two inch piece. Repeat for the other two inch piece. And the two 20 inch alignment pipes that, are, that we'll need that we're cutting, one end of those will be ground down so that it will press into these two fittings while aligning the gluing of the two fittings and these two fittings likewise while we're aligning the, the angle of the fittings as they're glued. These two have to be aligned very carefully so that they'll be pointing parallel to each other so that the two top and bottom supports will fit straight across between the two side supports. Do not use a ground end of a pipe later in a glued joint. It will fit too loosely. We'll use PVC cement that doesn't require primer and you'll follow the directions for the cement. Here are two pages of tips and warnings for gluing PVC pipes. They are very important. If you're not familiar with gluing PVC pipes, read these or watch these several times. You can read them in the web page version of this article referred to elsewhere in this video. Number one warning, the cement fumes are very toxic. Do all gluing outdoors, not in your garage, not in a room in your house. Leave glued pipes outside for two days so the fumes will dissipate and close the glue container tightly when finished gluing. Use PVC cement that does not require primer. That will save you a step. The glue will harden in a few seconds, so work quickly. To glue a pipe in a fitting, arrange the pieces so that the fitting is in your dominant hand. Apply the glue inside the fitting first, then apply glue to the end of the pipe. Press together fully as you twist the pipe or fitting one quarter turn. Do not disturb a glued pipe for five or 10 minutes and wait 24 hours after gluing the pipes before assembling the frame. If pipe will be glued into the center of a T, glue the center pipe before the others. When gluing more than one pipe to a T, face the gluing operations at least five minutes apart. It's easier to glue the bottom supports on a table. Lay out the parts to be glued with paper towels under the joints to protect against glue grips. Grip the ends of the pipe with steel wool and rotate to remove any burrs. Wipe the pipe with paper towels or cloth and then blow the dust off. The cement hardens in a few seconds, so work quickly. Here's an example of gluing a pipe to one side of a T. Apply cement to the inside of a fitting, put it down on the paper towel, apply cement to the outside of the pipe, and push the pieces together while twisting them about one fourth turn. Here's how to glue the elbow and T on the side supports so they're parallel to each other. I've actually already assembled and glued the side support, so I'm using that to illustrate the steps. Insert the alignment pipes into the elbow and the middle of the T without glue. Be sure both pipes are fully inserted. If not, grind some more off their ends. I'm using 12 inch alignment pipes cut from scrap. It's better to use 20 inch pipes as described earlier. Glue the elbow at one end of the six foot pipe. The next part is tricky. You might want to make a couple of dry runs to make sure you do the steps correctly. Work quickly. Coat the inside of the fitting with glue and the outside of the pipe. Before pressing them together, raise the alignment pipe to a 45 degree angle. Then push the pipe into the fitting as you rotate the pipe down against the driveway. Then quickly make sure that that the ends of both alignment pipes and the six foot pipe all touch the driveway. To assemble the shield, spread the tarp on the driveway or garage floor. Assemble the frame on top of the tarp. Connect the four foot pipes between the side supports. Fold the top of the tarp over the top support so that the folded top extends slightly past the second grommet on the tarp. 
Fold the sides of the tarp over the side supports. Attach with three 30-inch bungee cords through the grommets. Attach the feet to the side supports, then stand the shield upright. To use the shield when it's windy, put bricks or cement blocks on the feet. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and please leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website. You can also click links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the thumbnail at upper left to watch other videos related to this one. Click at lower left to watch a video specially recommended for you. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, please click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.